Hello my friends, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be going through the brand new version of the NixOS WSL Starter, which is updated for NixOS 24.05, which just came out a couple of days ago, so we are on the bleeding edge. So just like in the last video, this video, which we will be updating once this video is live, uh, we're going to go through the quick start guide step by step. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to get a NixOS virtual machine up and running in WSL. So why don't we start with the first step, which is to grab a release. We now have releases, by the way. How cool is that? Uh, so these are going to be numbered just by the date that I published them. Grab the nixos-wsl.tar.gz file and then uh, head over to your downloads directory and you can run this command. So uh, just to explain what each thing is doing here, nixos here, this is the name of your virtual machine. This folder here is uh, where the data for that virtual machine will be kept. And this is the file that we just downloaded, which is what we will be using to create that virtual machine. Uh, and so if you are interested, you can run WSL dash dash list. It'll give you a list of WSL VMs that you already have. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run import. So this step will usually take about a minute. Uh, when I have run this uh, previously, when I want to bring up temporary VMs, it takes on my computer about 30, 40 seconds. We'll see how long it takes this time. Uh, once that is imported, uh, you'll be able to run the WSL minus D, D for distro, uh, and the name that you gave uh, this virtual machine. So we're going to be running WSL minus D Nix OS. So we should nearly, nearly be close to completion. There we are. Took 44 seconds. And now we're going to do WSL minus D Nix OS. Uh, you can run CD here. And then if you run pwd, present working directory, you can see that you are in the home directory of the NixOS user. Now, if you don't care about changing the username, this is it, you're done, you're done. You don't have to do anything else. You, you can just clone the starter, start making your changes and start updating the changes. But let's say you want to have your own username in here. This is what we are going to do next. Uh, so you don't actually need to do this, but I'm going to update that. You're going to want to git clone this into temp configuration, or you can clone your own fork if you already if you already have your own fork at this point. So we'll do git clone into temp configuration, and we have a couple of tasks to do. Change the username to the desired username in flake.nix. Install win32yank with scoop and add it to your path in nixOS. And then we will apply the configuration and shut down the WSL VM so that all of the uh, changes, particularly the user changes, can be propagated. So uh, we can do nvim flake.nix and my friends this is wait let me let me do it like this this is gzvim gzvim is now bundled with this starter and let me bring this up real quick give y'all a, a little intro so little backstory lunavim is now unmaintained because the main maintainer now uses astrovim AstroVim does not play well with NixOS. Also, I don't really like using NeoVim as an IDE. I like using it as an editor. If you watch me develop Komorebi on this channel, you'll notice that I use an actual 
IDE, the JetBrains IDE for big projects. I highly recommend that you do the same, but there are times when you need a fast, reliable editor that does not break, that is not fragile. GZ Vim is that editor. Um, you can go through, you can, you can extend this, put your own options in there. It has a bunch of really sane defaults and my own personal superpowers. Uh, so if you want to code like Jeezy, check this out. Uh, you can, yeah, you can try it out for this little part of the tutorial. So we are going to change our username. Uh, let's just put Jeezy here. And then we go into home.nix win32 yank so run scoop install win32 yank i have already done that so if you haven't done that just go into powershell uh run scoop install win32 yank come back uh, and then add a line that is like this to the bottom of interactive shell in it so you don't have to worry about copying and pasting this exactly because gc vim also gives you uh, auto completion for paths. So you start with mount, C, uh, users, GZ, uh, scoop, apps, win32 yank, uh, whatever the current version is right now, that's 0.1.1. And then inside there, we have win32 yank. So we want to stop here. So that will add win32 yank, which is in this folder to our shell path inside of our NixOS virtual machine. So we have, where did I put that tab? Here it is. So we have done this, right? We have changed the username. We have installed Win32 Yank and updated our path. And now we can run sudo NixOS rebuild switch flake, uh, the path to your flake, and then we're just gonna automatically shut down afterwards so that we can propagate those user changes. So this is gonna take a couple of minutes. I think maybe around 10 minutes, depending on your internet connection. In the meantime, you may remember that previously in the last version of this template, uh, Win32 Yank, why don't we go ahead and get that up? Uh, this was the last version. Here are the files. So we had actually Win32 Yank here being installed inside of the virtual machine. And that was like, that was fine. That worked. But there was a change at some point. Not exactly sure when, uh, but it was a change in WSL2 itself, which made running executable binaries from inside uh, your virtual machines in WSL2 really, really slow. So there are a whole bunch of issues on here. Uh, I think, I mean, you can read through them. Uh, and basically some people have done S traces and stuff and there's some socket weirdness going on. Uh, so the time is uh, mostly taken up by socket polling and received from AF underscore VSOC. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's really long. I, I don't know why, why they have done this, but the workaround is to install win32yank.exe on the Windows side and add it to the path on the Linux side. So I'm going to leave this running for a moment. Um, I will pause and I will unpause when we are done. And we are back. So that took about nine minutes on my end. Might take a little bit longer on your end, depending on the speed of your internet connection and your particular hardware setup. Uh, you might see a few lines down here at the bottom that look a little bit worrying. I assure you, they are nothing to worry about. Uh, if you look here, it says the command under the NixOS user was not found. That is because we replaced the NixOS user with the GZ user. So now when we come back into our virtual machine, 
So, uh, that should be an uppercase S. There we are. So once we come back into our virtual machine, now we do present working directory. You can see that our user is now Jeezy. Next up, uh, let's head back to where we were. So we just did this step and we reconnected. So now we can move our configuration from the temp folder back to our home folder. Why don't we do that and do a little ls and you can see that we have the configuration. Uh, at this point, really all that's left to do is go through all of the fix me notices and make changes wherever you want. And then when you're ready to apply the configuration, you just have to run sudo nixos rebuild switch dash dash flake and the path to wherever you put your flake. So uh, one thing I did want to show just to show that it does work. Uh, where are we? So now uh, why don't I just grab a line here? So I am going to yank this line and I am going to paste here. So that is pasting from Vim in NixOS in WSL to Firefox running on Windows. Uh, and we can do the same thing here. So I'm going to copy on Windows and here I am in normal mode. I'm going to press P and that will come in here. So we have the bi-directional copying and pasting working correctly and performantly uh, using Win32 Yank installed on the Windows side. And that is it, my friends. That is it. Um, I, I hope this helps you get up and running with NixOS on WSL. I am a huge fan of both of these technologies. Um, I honestly, I cannot imagine using a different Linux distribution at this point because NixOS just works and it doesn't break unless you explicitly break it. Uh, you know what? Well, we've got we've got a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna walk y'all through where you can add stuff. So here in the home directory, basically everything is in the home directory. So you can select your core binaries that you always want on the bleeding edge. This will be pulled from the unstable uh, channel. It's not actually unstable. It's just it always has the latest latest versions of everything. Uh, so yeah. This is the stuff that I like to have. Maybe you want other stuff. Maybe you don't want some of this stuff. You know, maybe you're like, hey, why do I need htop if I use bottom? You know, uh, make your choices, put them in there. Uh, you can customize gzvim, as I said. Uh, there is a, a little explanation here about how you go about extending it. You can add uh, different regular vim options. You can add uh, different key maps. You can set up different LSP servers. Um, yeah, you can just you just go through uh, the the documentation of NixVim. Pretty much every plugin that you can imagine, it has an option. Uh, so you can go through and you can customize that even more to your liking. Um, so the stable packages, like these are the things that for me, I don't really want to come up across, come up against rather a breaking change unexpectedly. So these only update for me whenever NixOS updates. So the next version is going to be 24.11. So I'm very happy for these to stay uh, at the version that they are now. Um, you can set your preferred shell, you know, if you if you want a different shell. If you have any other packages that do not fit into here or here, there's a little spot here that you can add them into. Um, when you come into programs, if you don't like Starship, 
you can pick something else. Just remove this. You don't even have to disable it explicitly. Just, uh, wait, how do I want to do this? Just yoink, get rid of that, rebuild, no more Starship. So you can set your own prompt. Uh, I've got some what I consider sane default setup. So fuzzy finder, LSD, Z oxide, brute, uh, DRAMV. Uh, I generate my git config file. You can also use secrets to inject tokens for GitHub and GitLab. Um, my fish config that we took a brief look at earlier, uh, it has all of the familiar Z shell navigation shortcuts, a whole bunch of Git shortcuts, uh, some built-in aliases. So if you, like me, cannot get rid of the LVim muscle memory of LunaVim, I've just aliased that to MVim. And also if you'd like to use jvim for gzvim, I also have an alias of that there. If you are a former macOS user, you'll be familiar with pbcopy and pbpaste. Uh, we have those working here as well via clip and powershell. Um, and you know, just a couple of extra plugins. That's it really. That is it. Uh, what time are we on? We are on 16 minutes. I would say that is time for us to wrap on up. So, my friends, I hope that whatever you all do today, you have a great, great day, free Palestine, and I'll see you all back here next time.